we got a little something different today from the folks over at Upez. Let's open it up and take a look at this. All right, I'm sure this, this is just a shipping box and there's probably gonna be more of like a retail box inside. But we'll see what we got here. Oh. All right. So we got a Opez Exodus 600 portable power station with 256 watt hours and a, up to 600 watts and a 1200 watt peak. That's uh, that's pretty impressive for such a small little power station. Let's get this out of the box and check it out. Got a power cord here, uh, manual, and there's a little fuse in there. A couple, three different little extra fuses. Let's see what those are for. Nice high density foam here. The black stuff is the good, really rigid stuff. And our little power station. And that's pretty much it in the box. Got us a little handle there. All right. So, tip. We suggest charging the battery every three months. This will be friendly to the battery cycle and extend the battery life. Okay, these are the fuses, I guess. In case you blow those up. Charge it. So, th what's nice here about, I have, you know, quite a few of these little small power stations like this. And most of them have a big brick that has to go on the end of this. This means that the brick is inside here. So any old basic, uh, basic computer style cord plugs in, the brick's built into here to uh, charge it up and stuff. Let's go ahead and see what it came. Let's see here. So I'm seeing this for the first time right along with all of you. So we got us a power button. And it comes at uh, 65 percent charged so we got us our 12 volt 10 amp typical uh, cigarette lighter plug and each uh, each side has its own uh, button so you'd power your DC on here and then you know that comes up with more stuff here at the current rate of a uh, zero watts usage it would last 33 hours that's nice I do like it when they have the uh, let's see if we can get in here closer here all right so to power on your DC plug here, you'd push this DC button and you should see the uh, the lights come on here. And what this tells you, I do like the power stations that have this at your current rate of usage, how many hours uh, it would last, which in this case, which is uh, would last 33 hours just basically being on with the DC plug plugged in. And then if you wanted to power your AC, you turn that on there. So it's a, a quick press, not a push and hold. So you see how it says here, AC and DC. Little indicator light there. So it lasts 14 hours with, with no draw. So that's the idle consumption. So this is a little interesting here is there's a standard three prong plug and then a, a little two prong plug that's uh, for like a lamp type cord or something. I'm not sure why they would do that uh, anyway because it's ultimately can't be grounded anyway when it's a power station. Anyway, there's a three prong plug or a two prong plug here. And we can be powered by turning that on there. We got a USB A and a USB C. And we will look up the specifications of uh, how, many, how many watts that these can draw here. All right, so we're going to. Take a look at this manual here, and we're going to just turn right to the page we're looking for. All right, so we'll just get this up on the screen here, and you can pause this video if you want to uh, read this over. The basic highlights here is um, you can charge at a 300 watt max, 
and the max PV input is 240 watts max that's actually really good for a power station of this size and at 300 watts that means you can charge this thing in about 45 minutes to an hour again that's uh, that's really nice to have if you want to just grab this thing charge it up and go if you're in a hurry to get where you're going all right we're gonna go ahead and get this charged all the way up and then we're going to uh, run a couple of loads on this AC side and a few loads on this DC side and uh, and test it out and see how well it performs all right, so one thing I felt like would be a pretty good use for this power station would be, you know, for a construction worker or something like that, or just working out in the yard and whatever, uh, especially if you're off grid and whatever, would be to charge your, uh, recharging your uh, batteries. So you sort of have to take this along as a backup in case you run out of battery for your cordless uh, drills and whatnot. But when I went to do it, I realized I already have my battery completely charged here. So I'm not really going to test that. So we'll get that out of the way here. And uh, so what we're going to do instead, we're going to go ahead and test. We're going to go ahead and make us a grilled cheese sandwich with our little Hittrick cooker here. And what I love about this cooker now, we have a whole bunch of these types of small power stations. And what makes this one stand out as something a little bit special is considering its size is having 600 watts. Uh, is, is, is pretty good. Most of the other ones that we have that are this size are only 300 watts. Um, and this Hitrick cooker has a 300 watt setting, which is the halfway mark, which is honestly hot enough for almost everything. And then there's a 600 mark, but it does go over 600 by like 620, 630. Uh, so we're gonna attempt to see if this will pull a little bit more than the 600. Uh, watts that it's rated for. It says it has a 1200 watt surge and uh, we're going to find out. I don't know how long that surge is. Sometimes they say that and it's only a few seconds and sometimes uh, you can go quite a while. So we're, we're going to find out here. We're going to make us a grilled cheese sandwich. Get this set up here. So we will get our AC on here and put on the first setting. So, as you can see here, uh, it's pulling 314 watts. There's, a lot of times there's a glare. Let me try peeling this little sticker off of here. Let's see if that makes it any better. Anyway, 314, 315 watts. Woo! See, it's already hot. Now, I'm super spoiled, and I have a beautiful wife who makes homemade sourdough bread for me all the time. So we're gonna make a deluxe uh, grilled cheese sandwich here. And, uh, and we'll talk for a minute while I'm, uh, while, I'm, while I'm grilling this up. If you've never tried using mayonnaise instead of butter on the outside of your grilled cheese, you're really missing out. I highly recommend that you try it. I, I tried this a few years ago, and I have never looked back. This is the best thing ever. There's some mayonnaise on there on the outside. Put that nice and even here. Slap that down. Let's go ahead and put this up to 600 watts just so we can see what happens here. 600 watts will burn. So we're pulling 630, 620... Let's leave it on there for it. Let's see if we can do it for a minute while we at least heat it up. No, nope, we aired it out. So you can go over the six, the 600 watts for only maybe five seconds there. Let's go ahead and see if we turn it back off here. If it resets itself or if I'm going to have to restart the power station. All right, turn it off, turn it back on again. I said I don't ever hardly use the 600 watt setting. It, it'll burn something super fast unless you're searing a steak or something. 300, the 300 watt setting even that is almost too high for a lot of things so we'll get that on there and then we'll get this grilled cheese sandwich now uh, my, my wife and I we uh, we go on a date night all the time and so that's what we use these power stations all the time for is we we take our power state a power station our little hitter cooker and we go out to, to a, a viewpoint and where we have a nice view and make us a nice dinner in our little pot here and uh, you know talk about things and stuff and uh, one of the things that we've, we have been talking about was her starting her own YouTube channel. She really loves these uh, 
portable, small portable power stations. So she's going to start off kind of dedicating her channel to all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, she's got a much sweeter voice than me. I, I know I'm a little gruff. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a link down below. She's got only a couple videos. You know, she's new to this, so you know, cut her a little slack. You know, she's having fun with it. And uh, she just wants to share, uh, you know, what she's, what she's learning as she goes and stuff like that. And maybe, if I'm lucky, I can send her some new subscribers and she'll make me more sourdough bread. <laughs> All right. Now, what this does, this Hittrick cooker, once it re reaches temperature, you can see here now it's at zero watts. It it'll come off and on to sort of maintain uh, a certain temperature or whatever. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but it doesn't pull the 300 watts the entire time. So that makes it great. So you can you can really get a lot. This has a 256 watt hour capacity. So you can do the math to figure out how long that's going to take. Or you can look right here. You can see it's 315 watts. It's fired back up again. That means, and it shows right here, the 34 means it'll last for 34 minutes if we just ran 315 watts continuously. So the uh, that doesn't sound like a lot but you know this isn't really meant for cooking but it what I what's the the real standout feature to me on this power station is a it's a really good price it's it's under 150 bucks it goes on sale and if it's on sale right now for like 130 bucks or something I don't know I want to leave links down in the description for you to go check it out and I even have a coupon code uh, that's exclusive to my channel, so you can get a discount on this on top of any sale they may have going on. So I'll leave the links down below. Check it out. But uh, anyway, the, the the standout thing for this is it has a uh, it can support up to 240 watts of uh, solar in solar input. That's that's quite a bit for a power station of this size. So if you were in the middle of the day, and they have a a um, a 240 watt portable solar panel made by the same company that's specifically designed sorta uh, for that but they have other panels that you can use as well you could you could use a hundred watt panel or you could use a 200 watt panel or something like that it's a uh, 7909 jack in the back uh, to plug in but uh, what I use it didn't come with the the solar cable which uh, you know I really feel like it should but I think they're trying to really get it to be a discount, like a really good price. Because it is quite a bit cheaper. It's cheaper than an EcoFlow. Uh, and it's cheaper than the small Blue Eddy of the same caliber. Uh, by, by 50 bucks or so. So it, it's, a, it's a really good value. But if you intend to use it for solar, you're going to have to bring your own cable. Let me see if I can do this here without making a disaster. So what I did, because I have so many different kinds of power stations, is I went and bought this uh, adapter cable. So it connects to standard MC4 connectors on one end. So I have this running outside, basically. And then I have all these different kinds of connectors for the different power stations, which is pretty much covers every single type of power station that you could have. So if I was to buy a cable, which you would need to do unless you already had one and you got this power station, I would pick up this kind of cable so that you can use it on pretty much anything. It's not that much more than a basic cable. Uh, again, I'll leave a link to this one down in the description. I've got to flip this here before we get burned. Again, that 300 watts is, uh, is, is enough. To, so we're making a grilled cheese sandwich here. And in, a, in a matter of a few minutes here. I haven't done any, oh well, I can't say that I'm not going to do any cuts, but I haven't done any cuts yet. I kind of wanted to do this real time a little bit, however I could. Now, the, the, the other part of this was the DC uh, power. So, just know, I mean, I don't feel like I need to show that per se. They're 18 watt uh, ports. There's two USB A's and one USB C, and they both do 18 watts max, which is, I guess, considered fast charging. They do have a lot of things that have more power than that, 
But, you know, this is going to charge any device, a small device. It's not a big old PD port that's going to charge your laptop super fast or something like that. But, again, if you wanted that kind of stuff, you you got to spend probably almost double on a power station. So, for somebody who is planning to use solar, this is super safety method here. Um, for a solar, like, again, if you were in the middle of the day cooking, 200 watts... Uh, and, and what is this, 15 minutes or not even that? We're already done here. I'll have to look at the time and see. But uh, let's go ahead and see what our usage was. So we only used 15% of the battery to make this grilled cheese sandwich. And again, if we were hooked to a 240 watt solar panel, which again, they do make, um, that would be replenished within... Not much, long, not much more than the, the time you used it. We're talking about 350, only 115 watts more. So within 30 minutes, basically, you'd have this this thing completely back to full, and and made yourself some lunch. Where it would become maybe a problem is is at nighttime. But again, at nighttime, what else are you going to do besides make an individual meal for heating something up, power your your devices, and. Uh, you know, charging your phones and that kind of thing, it doesn't take that much power. So it, it's perfect for any kind of a camping situation or as a backup device. Even, you know, we're off grid, we have a much bigger um, systems than uh, this power station. So this isn't going to power your whole house or power your whole life or whatever. But I have seen some van lifers and things use a small power station like this and they get by just fine if they don't have, uh, you know, too much power uh, needs. Um, but, you know, my, again, my channel is mostly focused on DIY uh, solar stuff uh, with uh, standard uh, batteries and that sort of thing. And that's why I decided, you know, my wife decided to go ahead and do uh, power station reviews and stuff and, and talk about that kind of thing. Because we have quite a selection of power stations that I haven't really wanted to uh, necessarily review on this channel especially the small ones like this. Now, when I get a big one, I do absolutely love a big power station. And Opus makes a, quite a few large power stations that are capable of powering a small RV, van, or even a tiny home, and things like that. I don't yet have access to one of their larger ones. But when I do, I would certainly review that on this channel. But, uh, you know, I'm going to have her go ahead and do her own little review... Uh, with her, you know, womanly spin on it or whatever. I don't know if that's politically correct or what, but you know, people, some people are going to resonate with that better. And uh, she likes to talk about how cute they are and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, she's cute. And, uh, and you know, let's, uh, let's help her out a little bit. And I'll leave a link to her channel down there. Go check it out. Give her a subscribe. Tell her you came from over on my channel. And uh, that'd be awesome based on the price and the solar input uh, alone makes us a very good value. Uh, I've watched lots of other reviews of other uh, Opus products of their bigger power stations and stuff, and they get pretty much rave reviews across the board. So they're a real contender in the uh, portable power station market, and uh, for that reason, I'm really happy with it. It lacks some of the fancy features that some of the other power stations that I have has, with, you know, like um, wireless phone charging and a Bluetooth app for the device. This doesn't have any of that stuff, Bluetooth uh, apps. or This is a basic uh, power station with a lot of power. The 240-watt uh, solar input is a substantial amount of power uh, that'll get you a long way, especially in something as compact and lightweight. This is really lightweight. Additionally, I wanted to say, too, is this has a lithium iron phosphate battery in there. Some of the uh, ones that are really, really cheap, they don't use lithium iron phosphate. They use lithium ion batteries. And I just wouldn't recommend a lithium ion battery anymore. Uh, this lithium iron phosphate is so much better. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. And I'll see you in the next one.